Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Let me still catch your attention. We got uh, closing remarks by Minister Lajczak shortly. But before doing that, uh, let me say a few words uh, as the co-organizer and partner on this event. First of all, I want to congratulate uh, the Atlantic Council, Fred uh, Damon, to you uh, in excellent job. And I'm, I'm so delighted uh, we got involved together on this project of U.S. reconfirmation, re-engagement, whatever we would label it with the Central Europe and vice versa. Um, we heard a lot of very clever thoughts uh, and important things in those two days. I think the event was excellently planned. For us, 100 years, 30 years of freedom, 15 years of NATO, these are crucial milestones. Each of those was hand in hand with Americans. Together we are stronger. As you label it together, uh, we are stronger with allies, we are stronger. Um, Globsec is advocating for strong Europe. Within the strong Europe, credible, Central Europe as a contribution to Europe stronger, working together with a bond which is called transatlantic. In a global competition, there is no more efficient uh, model. We can say either that's an, an economic competition, whether this is a strategic thing, uh, that's clear. The last thing I want to say, which I found very inspirational and uh, in our joint report, I, I hope will uh, be a good backbone uh, for continuation of the project. But as Dan Fried said, concept of Europe uh, was built on nation and sovereignty. But there are values which goes beyond that and which binds us together because together we are stronger. And we should never go beyond that line which is here and we should remember. Fred, you would not remember when we met for the first time. This was in early 1999, and we met on the plane, flying from Prague to Bratislava. It was a small plane. I was sitting uh, by the window, and this guy comes in and sits next to me. I got no clue who he was. And we started to chat. And I was freshly appointed the Director General for Security Policy. And he just asked NATO and all the stuff. And we were coming out of this Madeleine Albright black hole, which was when you get too creative not to fit in that concept, when you just go below the bar. We left the plane, uh, you gave me the card, a journalist card, I say, oh Jesus Christ, he was you know, a well-informed guy. And then you wrote the article, which helped Slovakia actually to, to get out of this uh, black hole, uh, an op-ed which you wrote was an essential piece, uh, which was very nice. And we should still be reminded that if we want to have Europe strong, if we want to have transatlantic strong, we need to remember that this is a value and interest hand in hand driven concept. I'm looking forward for continuation of this demo to working with you. Uh, hopefully next year Globsec will have a strong uh, American representation. Uh, to bring some fruits uh, at the table for whole region. And I want to thank you both. Thank you, uh, Dan. Uh, and it's nice to be among uh, great friends. Thanks for everything. Fred, now it goes to you again. So th thank you so much, Ambassador Kutcher. Um, so uh, Madeleine Albright uh, calls herself uh, uh, Dan, uh, um, Ambassador Volker earlier called himself an optimist. She calls herself an optimist who worries a lot. <laughs> and so I'm an optimist who worries a lot. Uh, thank you for remembering. Um, uh, the. Uh, you do look at all this differently if you were a journalist, first for Newsweek, but most of that time for the Wall Street Journal, who covered all of the countries involved here, some of which were not countries, uh, part of a country, and now full country, um, uh, when they were members of the Warsaw Pact and when they didn't have democracy. And if you traveled all those countries, and some of which I couldn't get visas to, some of which I could get visas to, you know, the new economic me me mechanism in, in Hungary and, and uh, the Velvet Revolution, and, 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 and it, it's really remarkable that so much has been accomplished and that we don't internalize every day what a miracle it all is, and how fragile it all is at the same point. And so this is about reflecting on the past. We talked about all the anniversaries, but it's really, really about looking to the future. 
because none of this was inevitable. And it was individuals like many people in this room who made it happen. And none of it is inevitable going forward. And unless we work together as a community of influence, the modern uh, business school term is ecosystem. So as an ecosystem around this uh, set of issues, uh, uh, we can't be assured of the future. 100 years diplomatic relations, US Central European allies, 30 years since the overthrow of communism, fall of the Iron Curtain, 20 years since the first NATO enlargement behind, beyond the Iron Curtain, 15 years since the EU enlargement beyond uh, the Iron Curtain, NATO's big bang expansion. I don't know how many years since we were on the plane together. Um, but but uh, if you lived through that period of time, one didn't know whether the Soviets were going to invade Poland. Uh, uh, one didn't know what would happen at the end of martial law. One didn't know uh, that the Berlin Wall was going to fall. One did, all of these things uh, were U.S. engagement alongside friends and allies with purposeful strategic patience, but clarity about where we're going to go. And I hope through this project that we're doing together with you, at GlobeSec, that we can be instrumental in, 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 in shaping history again. We talk about working together to secure the future. That's what the Atlantic Council's purpose is. But I've been talking a lot to Damon about this, and I think we may change it to working together to shape the future. Because you can't just secure where you are now. You have to shape where you're going future. The first century of engagement and friendship created a more secure and prosperous world, and we now need to be purposeful in the plans for the next 100 years. Um, we are honored to drive forward this conversation on what comes next uh, with the Atlantic Council GlobeSec report, the United States and Central Europe tasks for a se second century together, and it represents the cornerstone of our mission. This report outlines an action plan for the U.S. and Central Europe as we start this period together, sorted into three baskets, democratic values and politics, security, and economics. In each of the, these, these areas, uh, we have to form uh, a strategic vision because if you don't know where you want to go, you're not going to get there. Um, the Atlantic Council is committed to partnering with policymakers and thought leaders as they develop this agenda for U.S. Central European ties in the context of U.S. EU ties, in the context of U.S. NATO ties. Uh, the values that underpin U.S. Central Europe relationship built the Atlantic Council and drive everything we do. The last two days we brought together leaders from both sides of the Atlantic and both sides of the aisle. Senator Murphy and Senator Collins joined us yesterday to share the congressional outlook. Foreign ministers from Hungary, Poland, Czech Republic, as well as the State Secretary for Interinstitutional Relations of Romania, Ambassador of the Slovak Republic of the U.S., have given their perspectives. During sessions today, we tackled the most pressing points for the U.S. Central Europe relationship, how to engage in our new era of great power competition, how to build consensus on issues of values and identity when the distance seems greater than it has in some time, and how to create a better, more secure, more, more prosperous world in a time of uncertainty and transformational change. Um, we also found today that the challenges facing the transatlantic relationship are far from insurmountable. Um, if you look at a uh, new era of global power competition, uh, contest between democracy and autocracy, uh, questions about the U.S. role in the world that are the most profound probably in the last 70-some years, uh, questions about the global system of, of, of values, principles, institutions that the founders of the Atlantic Council helped create, and then uh, issues around uh, the whole technological world, how it's going to uh, impact all this. To a certain extent, it can be bewildering and confounding, but we see it as a call to action. This is integral to the ethos of the Atlantic Council, being optimists who worry a lot and take action because of that. I'd like to recognize a few people in our community that have made this work and this conference possible. So thanks first and foremost to Globesec. And thank you for partnering with us to develop a strategy on Central Europe that will long outlast this event really want to thank you and your people. Jakob, Elena, it's been a pleasure to work with you. Um, I, I want to uh, recognize, I think Ambassador Weiser had to 
leave for another meeting. Are you still here, Ron Weiser? Okay, well, he'll come back in, and then we'll salute him again. But Ambassador Ron Weiser, Ambassador Dan Freed, uh, Ambassador Weiser's support and, and Dan's thoughtful leadership thread through all our Central Europe work, and, and, and thank you so much. It's truly top tier and transformational because of, of the two of you, and I'll come back to him. If he comes back in, let's uh, give him a round of applause. Uh, and thanks um, above all and always to the remarkable Damon Wilson. Uh, one of the most impressive thought leaders anywhere in this space, and to the indomitable Denise Forstuber. Uh, Denise, are you here? Is she in the room? Is she out taking care of work? Well, anyway, to David. Thank you. And just, and just an amazing Future of Europe initiative team uh, behind the leadership of, of, of Ben Haddad, a real great win for us to bring to the Atlantic Council. Finally, I want to recognize the communications events team. We have the best in the business. And now I'd like to introduce uh, our closing speaker, uh, Minister uh, Miroslav Lajcik, uh, who I think, I don't know, Middle East, looking over the East River uh, from your office at the United Nations. We've spent a lot of time together, and I so deeply respect uh, your commitment and your accomplishments and your continued leadership. Uh, he'll kick off, uh, he'll provide closing remarks and kick off a reception celebrating 101 years of U.S. Central European Partnership. He served four terms, I think, as foreign minister, served as president of the UN General Assembly in 2017, 2018, and helped shape the European External Action Service at the beginning as the managing director for Europe and Central Asia. Served as high representative and EU special representative in Bosnia and Herzegovina from 2007, 2009, and negotiated, organized, and supervised the referendum on the independence of Montenegro in 2006 on behalf of the European Union. I am looking forward to reading your memoirs. Um, he's a dedicated diplomat and has served uh, the uh, Slovak Republic and the international community since joining the Foreign Service in, in 1988. He has quite literally been writing uh, the new pages of, of history for his region. And, and for our relationship. Minister Lajcik, welcome to the Atlantic Council again, and we look forward to hearing your closing thoughts. <laughs>